Hello, I'm Mike Albert from Los Angeles, and for this first lesson, I'm going to be talking about microphone polar patterns. There are several different common polar pattern types, but let's go back and look at what a polar plot is and how it's used. We have two axes. One is the radial direction, which is measured in decibels. There's also the angular direction, which is measured in degrees from the axis of the microphone. You can see that zero degrees is right there on the top. This can sometimes be reversed, but it should be clearly labeled when looking at the specs of your microphone. So what this represents is how sensitive the microphone is in relation to the angle the sound source is to the microphone. Let's look at one of the most common polar patterns, the cardioid. So the max sensitivity for a cardioid mic is directly in front of it along the axis of the mic. As you move around to the sides, the sensitivity drops off, and at the very back, there is very little pickup whatsoever. Now, cardioid mics are good for picking up sound in one primary direction and excluding sound coming from behind the mic. This sound could be other instruments, the monitor, reflections from the recording space, anything that might interfere with the sound you're trying to capture. Here's a representation of this pattern in three dimensions. It's important to remember that the polar plot is essentially a 2D slice of the real three-dimensional pickup pattern. Here's a common example of a cardioid mic, the Shure SM57, typically used for instrument mics, such as guitars, pianos, and drums. It can also be used for reamping, a technique we'll probably talk about later on in the class. This is a good directional microphone and an example of a dynamic microphone. Here's another example of a studio mic with a cardioid polar pattern, the Audio-Technica AT4033. This is a condenser type microphone, but it too has a cardioid polar pattern. Now the other type of microphone polar pattern, which you will encounter in home studio recording, is the omnidirectional microphone, which as we see from this plot, is more or less equally sensitive across all angles. Here's another figure showing that pattern in three dimensions. One advantage is that you don't need to worry about precise placement to get the best performance. This is great for picking up the sound of the room or multiple sound sources which surround the microphone. Also, omnidirectional microphones can typically have a flatter frequency response, but that's another topic. Here are two examples, the Shure VP64 and the Blue Snowball. The last type of polar pattern that I'm going to talk about is the figure eight pattern. As you can see from this polar plot, the maximum sensitivity is directly in front of and behind the axis of the microphone. There is virtually no pickup 90 degrees from this axis. The advantage with this pattern is that it can be used to record multiple sound sources which are in close proximity to each other. If you had two guitar players together in the studio, for example, the microphones could be positioned so that the deaf area was pointed at the other guitar, allowing each mic to only pick up one instrument. Understanding polar patterns will help you get the best sounding recordings. It will help you know which type of microphone to choose for the instrument or space in which you're recording, and it will help you place the microphone in the correct position to get the best performance. Thanks for watching my video. I hope this reinforced the information presented in the video lesson. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything important or if something wasn't clear. Thanks.